If you frequently work with databases in Excel, then you can apply Excel's database functions to quickly and effectively analyze data. There are 12 database functions in Excel, and in this video, let's explore them one by one. Hi there, welcome to Excel Demi, where you can learn to use Excel and solve Excel VBA related problems. I am Ishraq Kader, and in today's video, I'll be discussing the step by step process of how to use database functions in Excel. So, let's get started. For this tutorial, I'll be using Microsoft Excel 365. Let us begin with a brief overview of Excel's database functions. In short, database functions allow us to perform simple operations like sum, product, average, etc. on a particular database. One way to identify a database function is that each function starts with the letter D, which stands for database. In general, all database functions have the same syntax. The first argument is database, which refers to the list or range of data on which you want to perform the operations. Second is the field argument. This is the column in the database from which you want to return the results. Finally, the criteria argument. This is the range that contains the specified conditions. Suppose we have the exotic fruits company database in the B4 to F10 range, containing the tree, height, age, followed by yield, and lastly the profit columns. Using the database functions, we can calculate various metrics and draw insights from this database. The dsum function adds all the fields that match the specified condition. We've constructed a criteria table in the H5 to M7 range. Now, let's calculate the total profit generated from apple trees. I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type dsum. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range, insert comma, start double inverted comma. For the field argument, I'll type profit. Close the inverted comma, insert another comma. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to H6 range. Close the parenthesis, press enter. So we generated a profit of $225 from the apple trees. Next, we want to know how much profit is generated from all the pear trees and apple trees with heights between 10 and 16. So I'll go to the G14 cell, press equal, type D sum. For the database, again I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field argument, I'll start inverted comma, type profit, close the inverted comma. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M7 range. Close the parenthesis, press enter. Therefore, we generated $248 of profit from apple trees and pear trees with a height between 10 and 16. The D average function finds the average of the values in a column that match the given criteria. In this case, we want to find the average yield of all apple trees that are over 10 feet high. So I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type D average. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range, start double inverted comma, type yield. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to I6 range. Close the parenthesis, press enter. So the average yield of apple trees over 10 feet in height is 12. In the G14 cell, we'll calculate the average age of all the trees in our database. Press equal, type D average. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field argument, I'll enter 3, which refers to the third column, in this case, the age column. For the criteria, I'll select from B4 to F10 range, which points to the entire database. Close the parenthesis and press enter. The average age of all the trees in the database is 13. The dcount function gives us a count of the cells that match the provided condition. For instance, we want to know how many apple trees are there in the age column that has also a height between 10 and 16 feet. So I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type dcount. 
For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field argument, I'll type H between double quotes. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M6 range. Close the parenthesis, press enter. If we observe closely, we can see that the value in row 10 satisfies our condition. So we get a result of 1. The decounter function counts the non-blank cells in a database. Here we want to count the non-blank cells in the profit column that correspond to apple trees with heights between 10 and 16 feet. So I'll jump to the G13 cell, press equal, type D counter. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field argument, I'll type profit within double quotes. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M6 range. Close the parenthesis, hit enter. There are no such rows that satisfy our condition, hence we get a result of 0. The dget function extracts a single record from the database based on multiple criteria. In fact, it works similarly to Excel's lookup functions. Let's say we want to find the yield of apple trees and pear trees from our database. So I'll jump to the G13 cell, press equal, type dget. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. Then I'll type yield in double quotes. And lastly, for the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to H7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. However, we get a num error since multiple values fulfill this condition. For the correct result, let's modify our formula to return the yield of apple trees that have a height between 10 and 16 feet. I'll go to the G14 cell, press equal, type D get. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10. For the field argument, I'll enter 4, which represents the yield column. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. We get a result of 10, which corresponds to the value in row 8. The dmax function returns the largest number from a database field. We can obtain the maximum profit for pear trees or apple trees with heights between 10 and 16 feet. I'll navigate to the G13 cell, press equal, type dmax. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field criteria, I'll type profit in double quotes. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. The profit for pear tree in row 6 meets this condition, so we get a result of $96. In contrast, the dmin function returns the smallest number from a database field. We can obtain the minimum profit from apple trees or pear trees with heights between 10 and 16 feet. I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type dmin. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field, I'll type profit within double quotes. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to M7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. If we look closely, we can see that the profit value in row 8 matches our condition. So we get a result of 75. The dproduct function multiplies the values in a database that match the given criteria. We can find the product of yields from all apple trees and pear trees with heights between 10 and 16 feet. I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type D product. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10. For the field, I'll type yield in double quotes. For the criteria, I'll select from H5 to M7 range. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. We get a result of 800, which is the product of rows 6, 
8 and 9 in the yield column. The DSTDEV function estimates the standard deviation based on a sample from the entire database. Let's assume that the values in the B4 and F10 cells are a sample of the entire orchard. In this scenario, we want to find the standard deviation of yields from all apple trees and pear trees. So I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type DSTDEV. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field, I'll type yield within double quotes. For the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to H7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. Therefore, the yield of apple and pear trees have a standard deviation of 2.97 rounded to three decimal places. The DSTDEVP function calculates the standard deviation of the entire population. Again, we will find the standard deviation of the yields for apple and pear trees. So I'll go to the G13 cell again, press equal, type DSTDEVP. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field, I'll type yield within double quotes. For the criteria, I'll select from H5 to H7. Close the parenthesis and press enter. We get a standard deviation of 2.65 rounded to three decimal places, which is slightly lower than the sample standard deviation. The DVAR function estimates the sample variance from selected database entries. We can calculate the variance of yield for apple trees and pear trees in our sample. To do this, I'll move to the G13 cell, press equal, type DVAR. For the database argument, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field argument, I'll type yield within double quotes. And lastly, for the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to H7 range. Close the parenthesis and press enter. Finally, we get a sample variance of 8.8 .8, rounded to two decimal places. Last but not least, the DVRP function calculates the population variance from selected database entries. In a similar manner, we'll find the variance of yield for all the apple trees and pear trees in our dataset. I'll go to the G13 cell, press equal, type DVRP. For the database, I'll select from B4 to F10 range. For the field, I'll type yield within double quotes. And lastly, for the criteria argument, I'll select from H5 to H7 range. Close the parenthesis and hit enter. We get a population variance of 7.04 rounded to two decimal places. This is somewhat lower than the previously calculated sample variance. In this demonstration, I have discussed all 12 of the database functions with suitable examples. You can use any of these functions according to your requirements. Don't forget to download the practice workbook from the video description. Try it out for yourself. It's a great way to improve your Excel skills. If this video helped you, give it a thumbs up. If you have any queries, suggestions or feedback, leave a comment down below. For more information, you can also visit exceldemi.com. Also, to see more helpful content like this, please consider subscribing to our channel. Hope to see you next time. Bye.